Well, Minister, first, thank you very much for taking uh, your time and taking a very busy time, actually, to, to accept our interview. We know that this sad Ukrainian co conflict continued for a year already. Um, as a direct neighbor of Ukraine, what is the impact so far for Hungary uh, because of this crisis? Well, we are confronted uh, with the uh, tragic uh, consequences of this war on a daily basis. Up to now, we have received uh, more than a million refugees from Ukraine. All of them are torn apart families, which is heartbreaking uh, to see. They all have to leave their fathers back because of the conscription regulations in place in, in Ukraine. Uh, we uh, definitely um, ensure them um, equal access to our education and healthcare system. Oh, the Ukrainian refugee kids and students are being enrolled in 1,300 schools and kindergartens of the country already. We give incentives to the um, uh, companies to employ refugees. But as, a, um, as an outcome of the conflict, uh, the inflation is uh, skyrocketing in uh, Hungary up to the 20s, which was totally unimaginable before. Uh, the uh, national energy bill has grown from 7 billion euros to 17 billion euros, so 10 billion euros extra expenditure for nothing, basically. But what is even more serious that, uh, you know, we have a Hungarian community in Ukraine, members of which have also been uh, recruited into the Ukrainian army, and many of them have died on the front line. So unlike those big countries which are representing this uh, war rhetoric, Unlike those countries, uh, we have lost lives and we do not want more people to die in this conflict. And if you raise the question how you can ensure that uh, you save lives of the people, it's obvious that this war should be stopped. In order to stop, you need ceasefire and you need peace talks. This is what we are advocating for. So you once said this impact is severe and immediate for Hungary. Uh, do you have any, can you put that in number? How much, if we put them in numbers, how much does Hungary last? Look, 10 billion euros is the extra expenditure uh, on energy and another 10 billion euros on lost opportunities on economic growth. This is the impact, uh, what we had to be uh, faced with. Uh, Re imagine, we have broken a huge export record last year, a huge export record, but first time ever in the last 20 years, our trade balance will be negative because of the huge increase on the import side, which has nothing to do with real economy. It's only increased price uh, of energy because of sanctions. So we lost a lot of opportunity to grow. And even regardless of this fact, uh, the growth rate uh, uh, reached uh, around 5% uh, last year, which is uh, a big uh, achievement on behalf of the Hungarian people. So I remember that when we first interviewed you, you, you said that uh, the Hungary is <coughs> for the, the sanction by EU. Uh, this time, it's, I believe it's the 10th sanction yes. already. Uh, this time, you do not support that sanction. Why? Uh, look, uh, if you try something nine times in a row and you fail nine times, then I think the consequence is that you should not try the same thing for the tenth occasion. Uh, the sanctions are simply not working out. The sanctions are targeting Russia, but they are hitting Europe. The sanctions uh, were introduced in order to push Russia on its knees, in order to, to stop the war and bring, bring peace closer. Now, Russia is not on its knees, peace is not closer, the war is going on, and the European economies are suffering. So the reason for the sanctions, the reason for the uh, skyrocketing energy prices is not some, is, is only sanctions. So the sanctions are causing these tremendous economic difficulties. Uh, and, um, and you know, if you, if you target sanction on someone, but you hit a different entity, then you have to think whether whether is the appropriate tool uh, to go forward. So that's why we do not support the sanctions. That's why we are always fighting for exemptions. That's why we are always fighting for nuclear to be out, oil deliveries to be out, gas deliveries to be out. As a member of NATO, you know, many NATO countries, they are talking about sending more weapons, yeah. tanks, even f fighter jets. Uh, 
Hungary is not support in this. Why? We are not delivering weapons mm. to Ukraine. Maybe we are the only one or one of the very few in Europe and in NATO who do not deliver weapons. We, we don't see the weapon deliveries solving this conflict. We don't see uh, weapon deliveries uh, bringing peace closer. Uh, we, we do believe that weapon deliveries are among those measures which bring uh, the risk of escalation and prolongation of this war. And if escalation and prolongation take place, it means that there will be more suffering. And this is something that we definitely would like to avoid. You said the, the answer to this, um, to this crisis is easy, which is peace. But answer is easy. It's hard to achieve. Sure. Uh, you urge Russia to sit down with the United St States to have direct talks. Uh, why, why not Ukraine but United States? Look, because uh, United, S United States play a, an important role in this conflict. U.S. Um, delivers the most weapons uh, to Ukraine. U.S. Uh, uh, gives the most support uh, to Ukraine uh, in, this, uh, in this war. So <coughs> I think that if we really want a long-lasting peace, if we really want a sustainable peace, then the Americans and the Russians have to come to some kind of an agreement. But, you know, recently we saw, let's say, President Putin s s indicates that maybe uh, Russia would quit, uh, stop the New START treaty with the United States, yet, you know, just like I mentioned, many countries, they are talking about sending more advanced weapons for Ukraine. In, the, in this situation, wh what do you think this, where do you think this crisis would go? Well, if we uh, <coughs> do not stop the war, then this crisis can go to a place where none of us would like to go. That's why I think the statement of President Putin, the fact that they are suspending their um, participation in START III, these are all, these are all <laughs> arguments and proofs that we are right that we have to make peace as soon as possible because we are in the 25th hour. And if we are not able to create peace now, then the consequences will be so severe and so serious that it would be, I don't say impossible, but, but very, very, very complicated to come back from them. But do you see the end game now? Af one year after the crisis, I mean, we still see the, you know, the, the, the crisis going on. Well, the crisis is going on in a more and more brutal way. Mm. More and more people are dying. Uh, more and more people are suffering. More and more people are fleeing. So <sighs> this is not a football game. There will be no winner. There will only be losers. And the longer it lasts, the loss will be bigger. You, s you believe this is a failure of diplomacy? Yeah, because all wars are failures of diplomacy. And all, and, and when, so war? is an outcome of failure of diplomacy. Peace is always a success of diplomacy. So this shows what we have to do, double, triple, uh, quadruple our diplomatic efforts uh, to make peace. So instead of uh, making statements, measures, decisions, which bring the risk of prolongation and, uh, and um, escalation of the war, we should put more efforts on diplomacy in order to reach peace.